What's up, Fish Tank people? FishTankTV.com. Dustin's Fish Tank's bringing it to you on a Sunday, baby. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. Sitting in front of the no maintenance tank. I've been doing a lot of maintenance on this tank, so I figured I would break it down for you all today on how and why this is the no maintenance tank and what components I'm using and how they're ultimately going to make less work for me with this aquarium. So we're going to Bring you from your head to your toes, top to bottom. In the words of Ludacris, we're gonna lick, lick, lick you from the head to your toes. We're gonna start at the top. We're gonna talk about the lights. Uh, we're gonna talk about the filter. We're gonna talk about the substrate. We're gonna talk about the stand. So we're gonna start at the top. First things first, on top we have an old school Fluval HO T5s, high output T5s. And until about 18 months ago, T5s were my favorite way to light an aquarium. I'm now an LED guy, the technology is caught up and the spectral composition is there giving the plants what they need. That's a lighting video that I will make someday. But let's start with this fixture. This fixture might weigh as much as me. It's heavy, it's bulky, and it's absolutely perfect for this tank. It's in a pediatric kid clinic. Some kid could just walk up, start pushing on it, and messing with it. This fixture doesn't budge. Additionally, God forbid this thing were to go into the water, it's actually made to be handled and be dunked into the water. Fluval doesn't advertise this because people are idiots. I'm not saying they do it, but this fixture can handle a crap load of water on it. Perfect, because I'm not here. Let's stay here for a minute. Let's look at these bulbs. Four bulb fixture, and I haven't changed in over a year. With these fluorescent lightings, the spectral composition, or what the light gives off, changes and deteriorates when bulbs get older. No, they may not be out, and they may look bright to us, but what we see does not matter. But for now, I'm going to leave these old bulbs in. Why? Because at this time, my plant load is very light. I don't want to swap bulbs. I don't want to have an algae bloom all of a sudden with newly increased light levels. Once the plants grow in, I'll swap the bulbs. When I replace the bulbs, I'm going to use two or three 6500K bulbs. When you turn them on, they should look pink. Kelvin scales BS, we'll talk about that in another video. But you want to turn them on, turn them on, they look pink. Uh, I will add a blue one as well to give you a little bit of color. I'm also going to stagger them and spread them out so that I'm not adding all the new bulbs at once, perhaps about three months from now. I just don't want to slam this tank with too much light out of the gate. I see this with beginners a lot too. They get a crap load of light for three or four, uh, for like only three or four plants they have in their aquarium. They turn their lights on, they blast the lights, and then as long as they can, then they get algae and they wonder what happened. You want to have as large of a plant load as possible and take in all the light. Yes, more plants both look cooler and does us more good. Let's stay here for a minute with light. Yes, this is a no maintenance tank. I'm not going to be here and I don't trust the people that will be here with this tank. I can't be relied on to turn this light on and off when they come in and they can't be relied on to do that either. The only thing I trust is a timer. Yes, stop for a second. I have been four degrees from the equator in the jungles of Peru. It's hardly ever full sun all day long. Even if the sun is always out, there's still shadows or shades or stuff from other plants. It's not a full 12 hours full baking in the sun all the time. I have a timer on this tank for only six hours. Now look, I'm not saying you can't run your lights longer. But scientists way smarter than me have done the work and proved there's diminishing returns with a longer photo period. You aren't going to get double the plant growth when you have double the amount of lights on. And you're running the risk of more algae, which is ultimately going to make more work for you. And this is the no maintenance tank. From the lights, we're going to move down to the surface of the water. I learned this from my boy Brian. We want to look at the water rippling. We don't want anything stagnant looking or any kind of film on this. This is not a snow, there's not a snowball's chance in hell I'm going to have to worry about the water being stagnant because this tank is clearly over filtered or probably filtered perfectly with an FX4. The water is whipping around the tank now. Now, if the water flow wasn't great, I'd be adding an air stone to this tank. I might even still add an air stone, bringing gases up from the bottom of the water to the surface up out of the top. Yes, let's talk about this filter for a second. If I had one beef with the FX4, it would be that it's unlike the FX6, you can't adjust the flow. Wow, wow, wow. However, you can reduce the uh, input and turn the output by adding a filter or increasing something along the bottom like a sponge or something. You could slow down the input of, uh, of the FX4, okay? There's a couple of reasons we went with the FX4 here. First, it's a beast of a filter and it hardly ever needs cleaned or changed, okay? Less work, less maintenance, no maintenance. The second is a bit more nitpicky, but this tank used to have a hang on back filter. I wanted to be able to see through this tank and not have my eye interrupted by a black box. Now look, is the FX4 as clean looking as chrome pipes on an ADA tank? Hell no. But do those tanks filter like an FX4? Hell no. But it's raw power and it's sexiness with the FX4s here. I'm happy with it. Clean tank, happy wife, happy life. But it isn't all fun and games with the FX4. That's right. Had it all hooked up, was flying, shooting videos, doing, but I forgot to add this little sucker right here and tighten this down. And I came in to 
the tank uh, drained all the way down to there, water all over the floor. Hey, honey, yeah, I uh, spilled water all over the floor at the place that gives you paychecks. You cool with that? Yeah, not fun. We're going to go from the filter, we're going to go down to the substrate. The substrate uh, was dirted a long while back. I have no idea how much of the dirt is actually still in there and how much was actually consumed by the plants. But we're going to say there is something in here to feed the plants. I can tell there's something because the baby tears is actually growing and that is likes a little bit more um, feeding at its roots. So we're good with that. Uh, we're going to move down from the substrate. We've got good substrate, so we don't have to worry about it. We don't have to come in there and feed it. We're going to go from the substrate. We're going to go down to this skanky stand. I have one little concern. This is like your plain Jane. My brother-in-law had this tank set up. He tore it down and I got it. I have one little thing I'm a little bit nervous about. This is like that particle board base and I think it's fine but I am a little nervous because it is kind of bowing out right here. So I'm a little nervous. I mean it's good like it's, it's not going anywhere but it's definitely got some like water damage on there. Probably done by yours truly. Now it's time to add some more fish. And I don't recommend putting skank tank water from the bag into your tank, but uh, whatever. We got the FX4 on here. You don't want to put that poop and stuff like that like into your tank if you don't have to. But it's time to reunite with your family, boys. Yeah, you guys were separated for a whole week. Get after it, dog. Go, big man. Get out. Yeah. Oh, what's up? Yeah. Boom. He's out. He's like, yeah, this is it. This one's up. Boom. All right, little dude, you're up. You got all your friends. You're good. Everybody's here. It's party time. The poop will go with you. Let's go, dog. Let's go, dog. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, little dude. What's up, little dude? Yeah. Bro. Where you been, bro? Oh, what's up, bro? Yeah, bro. United. Double LP world excited. Struck a match to the underground. Industry ignited for metaphor. Ah. Yeah. Ah, oh, I got the duckweed in there. That's no good. Woo! All right, folks. So I wanted to show you all adding some boosted philandra uh, to this tree right here. I just got some really insane boosted philandra in, but unfortunately, I don't have time to do it. A, I'm out of time. Uh, two, it's completely a different mindset. Uh, you know, when working on an aquascape, then talking through like the components of an aquarium. And D, your boy D's birthday is on Tuesday, so I don't want to rush this. I actually want to enjoy the aquascape uh, with this stuff all over here, kind of get in here, get my zen on. So if you like what I'm doing, subscribe. Check out the links to all the other uh, parts of this video. You can see the evolution of it. Everybody have a fabulous freaking week. Tank on. Blam. What up, fish tank people? FishTankTV.com, one of Dustin's fish tanks, bringing it to you on a Sunday, baby. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. So your boy D's been listening to his subscribers. What you want to know? You told me you want to see an update on the no maintenance tank. This is a 55 gallon aquarium that I try not to maintain at my wife's nonprofit pediatric clinic. You can see it got a little overrun with some foxtail. I want to show you what I can do in about 20 minutes with this bad boy and how I roll doing the water changes and getting this sucker fixed up and looking a little better. Here we go. The no maintenance tank got no maintenance. We're going to do some maintenance on this sucker. It's uh, five minutes till four. Let's see what we can do in about a half hour with the wife's tank. I haven't touched it in about three months. Foxtail anyone? I'm going to jump up your arm. break. I know I am, but I got to bring it to you all on a Sunday. So I want to do a little video on an update on the no maintenance tank that I try to do no maintenance on at my wife's work. So check it out. This is the 55 tank, gallon so aquarium. If you're just seeing this here. for the first time, not to Suck worry. I will link up all kinds of videos. Plan. You can click around here and see the start of this and the build this. I set this tank up almost exactly a year ago and I want to show you guys how it's going. So at the end of this video, you can see links to the other ones, and I do suggest you check those out to bring you up to speed on this tank. 
But what we got going on here is this. The 55 gallon tank, it's at a pediatric clinic, all volunteers. Um, and it's meant to be a no 